Alright kids, it's your boy here, Caleb from the Game Glyph. And you know what? I'm I'm ready to do it. I um I've taken a an anxiety pill. I'm ready to actually talk about Bloodstained Ritual of the Night for Nintendo Switch. This game was the game that out of all games in my life, other than maybe the Final Fantasy VII remake, which is an absolute masterpiece. I haven't even played it, and I know that. Um, this is the game I was... Holy shit. This is the game I was the most looking forward to because it's made by my favorite game developer of all time, Mr. IGA. Mr. IGA can do no wrong, or so I thought. He made my favorite game of all time, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. I've played that game endlessly. It is 100% my favorite game. I play it at least once a year to completion, and, you know, I go for at least like a 200 plus percent run of the map. He went on to make Portrait of Ruin, Order of Ecclesia, which was fantastic, Dawn of Sorrow, Aria of Sorrow, Harmony of Dissonance. I mean, I'm going to be honest, he basically is the guy that invented Metroidvania as a style of genre. So they are, they kind of cued his own thing, they call it IGAvania. But let's not, let's not deviate, let's not piddle paddle around what's happening here. This game sucks dick, okay? If you look at the game right now, visually, it is absolutely horrendous. You, this game looks like they just didn't know what to do with their asset management. And you know, the overall art direction of this game is far too complex to have one cohesive sense of direction. So, and like my reviews tend to be the same way and too long-winded, I'm going to try to focus on one thing at a time. Let's just focus first on the visuals. Because that's the least important part of a game in a lot of ways, right? As long as it's passable. So visually, you know what, I can mostly deal with this game. I mean, for all intents and pur purposes, I, I don't see how this game couldn't run on a PlayStation 2. Now, if you look at the game, it has 3D backgrounds, it has 3D characters, which is unlike any game that he's ever made before. So I will forgive him trespassing, if you will, within the realm of 3D, the uncanny valley that it is. But in my opinion, his art designers that make the majority of what his characters look like, since they were no longer able to make a Castlevania game, they didn't have the same body of work to pull from. So they had to just make a bunch of shit up. And by God, that's what they did. Everything is either, you know, kind of like a, a soft version of a Castlevania character, or they're just a completely randomized, kind of made up thing that really makes no sense. With Castlevania games, there was like a real gothic, you know, aesthetic to the whole game. You know, there was Dracula, there's vampires, lots of blood and red, and it was very gothic and it was beautiful. And this game, it tries to capture some of that, but it tries to mix in kind of like an anime weeb waifu type, you know, aesthetic to it, which does not fit. It actually really throws everything off. Also, I believe that the gentleman allowed too many people, uh, you know, to be too involved with too many ideas. Um, and that's why this game just looks all over the place. Like, for example, if you press start and go to the character, look at this character model. Now, I understand this is the Nintendo Switch. Okay, I know that this is the inferior version of the game. But look at it! It looks terrible! Look at the overall menu! It's ugly! It is an ugly, ugly, ugly menu. Let's beam back to town. Because there's nothing super unique, in my opinion, that they added to this. You know, you're a shard binder, which is what I am after I eat too much Taco Bell. A shard binder. And what that means is you kill every enemy and you get, you know, their powers. There's nothing unique about that. Uh, I mean, Soma did that. And Donna Sorrow. Uh, you can basically do that in every Castlevania game. So that's that's nothing unique. So that there's no reason that they had to limit the graphics or anything like that. They just decided to go into a 3D polygonal direction with it and also go out of their way to map things in 3D, which is why the whole game looks so ugly. Like, let's let's look at this character profile. Look at her! Look at how ugly she is! I mean, this is barely passable for PS2. Now, I've seen what this looks like on PS4. I've seen what this looks like on PC, and it does look better. The resolutions of the textures are higher. That is true. But it still is an ugly character design. Look at that stupid hat, or stupid hair. It makes no sense. It's impractical. It's ugly. Why, why are her sleeves so puffy like that? She doesn't want to be a pirate. So we're just going to go ahead and say it. The graphics in this game are not good. They are better when they're running at 60 frames per second 
on the PC version. Okay, I know that's the best version. But come on, most people that want to play this game are longtime fans of his games. So they're going to want to play it on a handheld because that's what they played it on most of their lives playing these games. So right away, this game looks like absolute ass. Stutters at maybe, if you're lucky, 30 frames per second. Okay? There are scenes in this game where they've looked like they've put more details. But overall, some of the, the games, like the, the static CGI in this, like for example, even this part right here, like the way I'm walking here, the way it's, it, it, it scrolls, does not make sense in the realm of physics. That's fine. Um, and they went out of their way to kind of do stuff like that. Like for example, for example, there's the castle in the background. Okay? That is not, that doesn't geographically make sense. So let's enter the castle. This is going to be more of like a gameplay type thing. So we're going to enter the castle. You're going to fight a bunch of these lame ass guys. They're nothing, right? This is the intro. And you're like, this looks pretty good. This is after you, you know, get off the ship and stuff like that and fight the giant tittied monster um, that just makes no sense. And you fight that and you get, you know, you get here and you're trying to make your way to the castle because you, you know this is a Castlevania game, even though it's not a Castlevania game. So you make your way to the castle, and you know, you're, you're basically in the castle right now. Well, you're not. You're just in some little stupid house. So then you're back outside. You're walking through the woods. And you're like, this is not so bad. You know, there's some birds and shit. That's pretty cool. But look at this needless rotation. See, if they didn't have to do this. They, it, it doesn't add anything to the game. It just, it looks ugly. It's ugly looking. Okay? <laughs> the best looking room is this room. This is the same thing they do in all Castlevania games where instead of loading, even though you do load quite a bit in this game, this is your loading screen between areas. You still have to wait. Darkness. Not that much. Not too bad, right? So I'm in the castle now, and there's a lot of detail. There's a lot of detail to this, but it's not detail in a good way. It's like too much detail about the things that don't really matter because this game doesn't have a cohesive aesthetic. So let's move on past the graphics, even though it's hard for me to do that, because aesthetic for me is everything, and the aesthetic for this game is all over the place, and it looks absolutely terrible on the Switch. Like, look at this. I know that the Kickstarters did this, and these are their images back here, but what's Anime Girl Face next to Dork Face over here, right? Makes no sense. And also, it takes you out of the game. So they tried too hard to please their fans by making a bunch of unreasonable statements and things that they would do in their Kickstarter. So that's half the problem right here. Second problem is gameplay. Look at this dumbass. He's a big dude, but he's one of the first enemies that you fight, so he dies easily. He's pointless. Makes no sense. They don't scale things at all, which is something they should have learned from previous Castlevania games. If they're going to make this more of a looter, then they need to scale the enemies to the level that you're at, or is it nothing but boring? It's just repetitive. So that takes a lot of the challenge out of the game. The other part of the game that's kind of disappointing are the controls. So let's talk about the controls for a second. You jump, and then you use your attack, and then you have your various magic attacks that you can do. You can double jump, you can do all that kind of stuff, and that's fine. But in the Switch version, there's input latency that is still, to this day, I don't care what anyone tells you, it is extremely noticeable. It doesn't matter what controller you're using, but it does not control very well. It doesn't. I'm sorry. She's got a weird floaty type feel to her and her collision detection is at best bizarre and at worst absolutely horrendously terrible. So that is what it is. Now this game overall you know has the same controls of Castlevania. You can go in and you can assign different shards that do different things like for example you know you got the Bloodbringer which is the one that I have right now. It's a summon. You've got a passive, which, you know, makes me resist petrification, to pissification. Ref Reflector Ray, which allows me to get to places I normally can't go. Healing, blah, 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 allows me to heal. Summon Bat. I I've got some really shitty shards set up right now. Some really shardy shit set up. Um, uh, also, you know, I mean, the character, I, I made her look this bad. That was, that was me. Um, I did that. So that's, you can let that go. But the controls in the game, they've tried to improve them. If it wasn't for how bad the input latency would be, I would say that isn't really the problem of what this game has. So that's fine. Now, I want to go to a highlight of the game, and I'm going to go right on and say it. The music is exceptional in this game. It is absolutely on par with Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and if it wasn't for the music in this game, this game would be a complete and absolute failure. 
So my review of this game isn't of the game in its entirety, it's of the Switch version. So I have no issues with the music. There was some compression done to the quality, I understand that. The sound effects, I like them. I think they're great. I think they fit perfectly. Uh, there isn't enough atmosphere that I think this game deserves, nor do I think that the overall compositions are as shockingly good as something of like Symphony of the Night or even Donna Sorrow, but it's the same composer and she did an, an absolutely wonderful job and did IGA quite a service by doing it. You see that character just glitch in? There's shit like that all over this game. Look, look how low text that is. Garbage. Garbage dump. So the sound is absolutely the highlight of the game. Now, on paper, the gameplay would be great. So let's talk about the gameplay. It isn't that great, and that's my problem. Uh, I don't know if it's mostly the Switch version or not, but overall, I find that the gameplay is more repetitive in this one than anything else because I find the environment the least appealing out of all of them. Because I know this kind of goes back to the graphics, but I wanted this game to be, at worst, cel-shaded, and at best, amazing pixel art. Like, if they would have just made it look as good as Order of Ecclesia, or even Dragon's Crown, they could have done something like that, and people would have loved it, and it would have been fantastic, but they said, no, fuck you. Fuck what you want. We're gonna, we're gonna do what we're afraid that if we don't do, our fans won't back the game. So we're gonna make this game look like absolute dog shit by making it polygonal. Anyways, I can't stop talking about how ugly the game is. Because it is ugly. And I've seen it run on better systems, and it looks better, but it's still ugly. I digress. The gameplay is not very different from Donna Sorrow, or even Order of Ecclesia, probably more like what it's like. Um, you're not gathering souls or glyphs, you're just gathering, you know, shards. It's the same kind of thing. So on paper, that's a lot of fun. But what makes it not fun is that I don't I don't care how hot you guys want to weeb out over this, this waifu of a character, but the main character sucks. She's fan service. There's no attachment to her. She has no development. She has no interesting backstory. There is no interesting backstory. There's not even an interesting villain in this game. So you do not feel overly compelled by any sense of story. Now there wasn't a lot of story in something like Symphony of the Night, but there was enough story and enough mystery. And you had the overall overarching theme of Dracula is bad. You are son of Dracula. You are killing your dad. That's pretty heavy shit. You can kind of elaborate from there. And there's other stuff going on with your mom and whatever. And you have Donna Sorrow where you place basically Dracula's reincarnation, but you don't want to be evil. You have Portrait of Ruin. You know, you have the whole Belmont. You have all the lineage of that going on. There's a lot behind the Castlevania series that's very absent from this game. Now, I think, to be totally honest, if this game had... If Konami wasn't trash, if they weren't garbage, he would have been able to make the game that he wanted to make. But they decided that pachinko machines and a bunch of dumbass shit is more important than actually giving fans what they want and having a good company. So that's that's what I'm going to say. I'm, I'm pretty much going to wrap it up there. This game is, is the most disappointing game of all time. I literally barely was able to get through this game once. I'm trying to go through like more, you know, and get more stuff and do more of a completion run in this version. I'm not going to be able to do it, guys. When I maybe get my gaming computer eventually, I might download it because it'll be on sale. Um, I might download it on Steam and try to play through it again at 60 frames per second with high resolution textures. Just hope that it's better. By the way, this is the most beautiful room in the entire game, in my opinion. This is the save room. It looks awesome. I love that moth guy. But there's no context to that. You know? So all the bosses are annoying. There's a lot of modes in this game that are, in my opinion, nothing but basically they're just doing fan service because they said they would do this in their kickstarter and so they're doing it now I, I don't care about any of that i'm sure there are people that do but to me i had a very bad first impression of this game because when it was first released it was all but unplayable with its input lag and how bad the graphics were and how glitchy it was it was not optimized well for the switch this system can run you know freaking super mario sunshine it can run galaxy it can run uh, obviously newer games, like, I mean, it can run Mario Odyssey, it can run Luigi's Mansion, it can run Warframe, it can run Doom Eternal, and you can't get a good port of this game done by the company that made it? Maybe you should have let Panic Button do it, okay? I think what really happened here is that, basically, he lost control over his own game, and it isn't him. I don't blame you for this, IGA. I thank you for trying to give me the game that I want, that your fans want. But unfortunately, Konami fucked that out of happening. So what we have here is the most washed out, washed up version 
of Metroidvania that ever dared not call itself a Castlevania game. So here it is, finally, after having the game for two years, this is my opinion on it. As you can tell, it's scathing. I'm not into it. This game on Nintendo Switch sucks dick. <laughs>